Hey, welcome to my little playpen for the day. This is a 2011 Mercedes SLS. I want to say, first of all, a big shout out to my friend at Core Cars here in Vancouver for providing me this beautifully kept 2011, only 22,000 kilometers on the clock. Now, I just want to send you to a video I did about a year and a bit ago at Hockenheim in Germany. I was a guest of Mercedes-Benz to go and drive the new GTR on the racetrack. So click on that card if you want to see sort of like the successor to this car. So let's get into what this is. This car was only in production for about four to five years and they sold these cars as really an exercise in design and performance. It's a grand touring car. But what it really is is a piece of art and the Gullwing doors is reminiscent of one of the most beautiful and most collectible Mercedes, the Gullwing 300s from the 50s. So they decided to come out with a car that captured that essence, but they also wanted to capture the performance that they had with the SLR McLaren car that came before it. So this is a time capsule in the early 2000s, and I don't think we're going to see it replicated again. So are these going to be collectible because of these doors and this look in the long run? Absolutely. So the one you see here, as I mentioned, 2011, it's got a 6.2 liter V8 under the hood, even though it says 6.3 on the side. Mercedes did that for a while. And then you have this beautiful long hood. And what I want to point out to you is you see where the wheels are. And then you look under the hood and you see where the engine is. The engine is actually aft of the wheels, meaning that the center, the weight of this vehicle is between the wheels. The transmission is in the back of the car. So there's a drive shaft, a carbon fiber drive shaft that connects the engine to the seven speed dual clutch in the back. This was also the beginning of dual clutch transmissions. This one is a Getrag unit. But really what this is, Let's just call it what it is. This is sex on wheels. This is a throbbing red phallus with four wheels. And the person that wants this car wants to get attention. The person that has this car certainly gets attention from all sexes. It is just a stunning looking piece of art. And that's one of the ways you have to look at it. A piece of art that you can drive, collect and hold in the long term. So come on inside, I'll show you around and we'll go for a drive. Okay, the doors, I have to say, I have cracked my head on them about three times. Now, that's just going to take a while to get used to. So it's, it's something you have to, you know, you stand up and you're like, oh crap, you bang your head. Anyway, I didn't catch it on video. You have to slide into this car kind of with your butt first and then slide your pivot your legs over. It takes a little practice too, but you get used to it. Trust me, if you own this car, you'd be quite happy to, you know, put up with cracking your head once in a while and sliding in and out of it. Um, all right, so that's how you bring the doors down. They're not electric, they're manual. And opening them the same way, you push up, okay? So that's really cool. A real superhero kind of car. Now the rest of this interior is of the generation, meaning that this is what you got with Mercedes-Benz cars, and it really isn't that different from what else was offered in the family at that time. Steering wheel used from other Mercedes cars, the instrument cluster, the same kind of thing. Uh, this one has 22,000 kilometers on it. Now the screen is kind of quaint and small, but it's of the generation. You don't get the big MBUX you get in today's cars, but it does have all the connectivity. It has the command control system that was, as I mentioned, of the era. So you get phone connectivity, navigation, those sorts of things. In the center, you get a similar center console that you would get to other vehicles in the Mercedes family. It's below that when you get to the shifter and the controls to the left uh, that they switch things up. And these are the drive modes. There's a rotary switch there for comfort, sport, sport plus, and manual. Uh, start, stop, you get the traction control, you can lift the spoiler up and down, and you can hit the AMG button. Uh, the inside of this car is beautifully finished. This particular model has the upgraded leather interior. It has the upgraded Bang & Olufsen stereo system. And uh, the finish on these seats is first class. The stitching on the dash, on the glove box, on the center console tunnel here, uh, the center armrest, absolutely first rate and really pops with this red. Because this is a grand touring car. 
Um, yes, it's very uh, performance oriented. It is a performance car, but it really is designed for putting the miles on, relaxing, enjoying a beautiful interior. So we're not going far, but I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> that's, that's in sport. Uh, you know what? This is a lot of fun because it just looks so damn cool. Even from the driver's seat, you get this big, long, hood. As I mentioned, it's a phallus on wheels, an extension of your male anatomy shooting down the road and making you feel like you're important because under the hood is a 6.2 liter 32 valve hand assembled V8 engine in a Faltebach in Germany. So you have one guy who puts the engine together. His name placard is actually on the block for everybody to see. I have been to the facility where they make these engines and it's pretty cool. It's, a, it's actually a small town in the rural countryside of Germany, which is where they make these engines. And they take that and they plop it in an aluminum, for the most part, all aluminum structure. There is some steel in the A-pillar here and in the roof to, you know, work with those gullwing doors. But for the most part, this is an aluminum car. It's got 563 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. Now, the newer Mercedes-Benz AMG cars can get more power than that, but it's the combination of a willing soundtrack, a willing engine, and a good transmission. This has a dual clutch. Mercedes was sort of anti-dual clutch in many of their performance cars. They had a classic torque converter setup, but this has a dual clutch. It's a seven speed unit and it's working just fine. It's especially happiest in the manual mode. You put it in manual, use the flappy paddles and you get a rewarding experience. What I find interesting about this car is it's immensely comfortable. Man, this thing is comfortable. It has the Mercedes-Benz appeal, which is a comfortable, luxurious car, but also, um, you know, all of the go that you want from an AMG car. And that's where Mercedes-Benz really shines with their AMG cars. They can be sedate, comfortable, luxurious, and then you put them all the way up to their most aggressive settings, and they can be real road monsters. And that's what this car is. It's the kind of car you would own and you would buy and you would drive and you could, you know, either just enjoy the looks and the aesthetic or you could really beat on it and have some fun. Another car that reminds me of this is the BMW Z8 or the Z8 that came before this car. And that too was another beautiful example of design. They used the M5 running gear, they put in that beautifully classic designed Roadster. And Mercedes has done the same thing with this. They've taken what they know how to do really well and turn it into a classic shape. This is a timeless design that is, it looks sexy in 2011. It looks sexy in 2020. Trust me. Sex appeal never goes, you don't have to bring sexy back. You got this, you got sexy forever. Now there was also a convertible made out of this model, not nearly as desirable. It was the same with the Gullwing, um, you know, 300s back in the 50s. Uh, those cars are around and they're really quite collectible. Our prime minister in Canada has a 300 convertible, but it's the Gullwing that everybody wants. That's the design that gets people excited and it always will. So this car brand new in the Canadian market was around $260,000. There's a few extras on this. It has a special paint color. It's got the upgraded interior, an absolute beautiful color combination for this car. And it really is a grand touring car. Once again, thanks to corecars.com or core motor cars. You can check out the listing for this on the website at any time and all the other cool cars they get there as well. So this is really neat because this car brand new was expensive. And I guarantee you, as we go through the decades, they're not going to go down much, if at all, in value. They're going to go up in value, mostly because of this. All right, see you later.